The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. We're recording here Thursday morning in the midst of some pretty wild weather, so I do hope that you've all been warm and dry and safe and that there will be blessing for you in the worship that we share today. It was good coming into the the church this morning and to see a load of buggies all lined up because we've started Noah's Ark again, our mother and toddler group, after a very long, uh, after a very long gap. So it's good that we're moving forward, despite still having challenges, moving forward back to the normality that we enjoyed But let's now worship God together as we sing, Come People of the Risen King. These are the words of the psalmist who says, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Let us pray. God, our Father, we are ever conscious of the gifts you have showered on humankind. How our deepest feelings can be expressed in music, word and art. How illness can be cured by the insight and skills of scientists and doctors. How the impulse to pursue truth and justice and peace can transform the lives of nations. All of this flows from your being. And we pray that our response will be thankful hearts shown in our devotion to you, shown in our willingness to live our lives according to your will. Help us to grasp 
that nothing of value will be established through us unless you build. Help us to grasp that there is no lasting security unless you watch over us. Let this time of worship strengthen our bond with Jesus as your spirit deepens our understanding of your word, as your spirit clarifies our vision of what it means to be your people in this moment. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read together in God's word, folks, as we turn to Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 15 and at verse 14. Romans 15 at verse 14, and we'll read to the end of verse 22. This is Paul coming to the end of a letter where very deep and vital Christian truths have been expounded. And now he's giving himself over to some personal expressions of appreciation in regard to the Christians at Rome and also the commitment he has to their future growth in grace. Romans 15 and at verse 14, Paul writes, I am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. I have written to you quite boldly on some points, as if to remind you of them again, because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, with the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God, so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who were not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. God will bless to us the reading of his word. May he give us grace to embrace his truth and to follow that truth forward in our life of faith. We sing together, Longing for Light.
Let us pray. God, our Father, we are reminded today as we turn to the words of the Apostle Paul of those times written for us in your word when people heard the gospel, turned to you in faith and received the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that your word will come to us this morning with power so that faith might be born or be made stronger so that more and more we are established in the love you have shown us through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, from time to time I've heard writers speaking of the tyranny of the blank page. Nowadays it might be the tyranny of the, the blank screen, but maybe they're facing a deadline and they're really needing to squeeze the, the words out, or they're following a, a project and they really need to advance that in some way, but for some reason the words are just not coming. On the other hand, I recently spoke to you about a Scottish artist. His name is John Morrison. There was a documentary on television about him recently. And he was saying that there's nothing more inspiring to him than a blank canvas. Because it's an invitation for him to create something new. Now that was very much the attitude of the Apostle Paul with regard to preaching the gospel and to establishing Christian communities. He liked nothing better, we're told in our reading, he liked nothing better than to go to a place where the gospel had not been heard, where in a sense he wouldn't be building on another people's work. He was inspired by a spiritual blank page, by a spiritual blank canvas, if you like, by a, a spiritual ground zero. He responded to that with enthusiasm and with conviction. Now that speaks to me of a man who is eminently confident within himself of his calling of the message that he was given to, to preach and ultimately of the mission of the church. Paul, in the short passage that we read earlier, speaks of himself as being a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles by the grace of God. What is interesting there is that he describes himself as a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Because that was his distinctive mission within the church. To take the message of Jesus to people that lay outside the Jewish faith. Now in this, uh, he was really just following what the ancient prophets of, of Israel saw as the destiny of the people of Israel. They saw Israel as being a light to the nations. A light that would bring others to worship at the feet of the only true God. And what Paul is, is saying in his teaching is that the destiny of his people has been realized in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has emerged from the community of Israel and he is the light of the world the one who will lead others to worship the true God, the one who will unite all peoples everywhere in worship to the true God. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world and that those who followed him would not walk in darkness, but would receive the light of life. Paul's vision was of a world, a creation that had fallen away from God, that had fallen into darkness, and that the Lord Jesus Christ would lead them out 
of darkness. Now that was his particular, his distinctive contribution to the life of the church. But he makes it quite clear when he's speaking of his calling that none of this would be achieved without the grace of God, without the resources that God has given to him. It is, he says, because of the grace God gave me that I have become a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And it's with that faith in his heart, it's with that conviction that he engaged in his work. And he was confident that he would always have the resources that came from God to be faithful in that work. Do you remember when he wrote to the church at Philippi, he expressed his confidence that what God had begun in their life and witness, he would complete. And that is the faith by which Paul is moving in his ministry. And that's something I think, friends, that we need to take more regard of in the life of, of the church to believe that what God has started in us, he will complete. That the church has a destiny. And that destiny will never falter until that day when Jesus makes all things new. Jesus once said to his followers, you did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to bear much fruit. We are here for a purpose. We are here to complete the vision that is set before us of being the body of Christ here on earth. And what God has, has started, he will complete. So Paul was very confident of his calling and what is involved in that and what it kind of uh, is a kind of overlap, if you like, into his confidence in the message that he was given. Paul says, God has given me the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God. The priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God. Now, Whenever we think of the priests in the temple in Jerusalem, we think of them offering sacrifices. But they also had a, a very important teaching role, which was exercised daily in the temple. And Paul is thinking of them when he thinks of his own work as a preacher of the gospel. He's proclaiming the gospel of God wherever he may be in the same way that the priests in the temple in Jerusalem are expounding the law to the people who are gathered. And Paul has great confidence in this message because he's seen it working. He's, he, has, he has shared what he knows to be true in Jesus he has seen that message impacting at a very deep level on the lives of men and women and has seen them born again, has seen them renewed from within, has seen them become a new creation as he himself was. And that is part of the, the larger project, if you can call it that, of God and bringing back the whole of creation to himself. He's beginning with the men and women who have heard the gospel, who have responded to the Lord Jesus Christ, and have the Holy Spirit working in the depths of their being. And someone who has that kind of confidence in the message, you just can't imagine him being apologetic in any way about his beliefs. You can't imagine him holding back 
whenever there was an opportunity for him to share what he knew to be true. You can't imagine him compromising in order to make the message more acceptable to the society around him. Paul was confident in his message and he took every opportunity, whether it was one-to-one -one with people, whether it was in the synagogues in which he was invited to, to teach, whether it was knocking heads with intellectuals as he did in, in, in Athens. He took every opportunity to share this message which was powerful in the power of God's Holy Spirit. So there's tremendous confidence here with Paul in his calling and his message and in the larger mission of the church. What he says to us in our reading is that he was given the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an, an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So that the Gentiles, those outside the, the Jewish tradition, that even they may become acceptable to God. That having believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, they become part of the ongoing mission of the church to proclaim the gospel wherever it hasn't been heard. The Gentiles set apart for service. And there's no way that if we can go back to the beginning that Paul would ever be intimidated by the fact that he was going to areas of, of the world where people had, had, had no knowledge at all of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he was part of this great surge that God had, had, had that, that, that God was behind. He was part of, of that surge to make Jesus known throughout the whole of, of creation. He was confident of his calling. He was confident of the message. He was confident that men and women would embrace the Lord Jesus Christ and be set on course to serve him in his community of faith. And that's a, a vision that we need to hold before us, friends, there's so much. It doesn't matter what Christian tradition we belong to in the West, certainly. But there's so much that might dishearten us about the lack of, of progress that the church seems to be making. Just look at the, the statistics of church membership, church attendance. What we need to grasp is that we are part of a tradition which began small, which began with so much that stood against this new movement of the, of the Holy Spirit. And yet, it spread. It gained ground. More and more men and, and women turned to the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the world from these very small beginnings. So it falls to us to remember this, to remember these people that, in a sense, were called to set the ball rolling. They were sure of their call. They were confident in the message. They believed that they were part of God's great unfolding purpose for the whole of humankind. Let us pray. God our Father, as we reflect upon these times that we have passed through, we thank you for all those things which have kept us steady and strong. 
for the family and friends who have kept in touch by whatever means, for those whose work has made food and other essentials available, for the doctors, nurses and hospital staff who have cared for the sick and troubled, for dentists, pharmacy staff, teachers, police officers, firefighters and others whose work places them at risk. We thank you also for the fellowship of the church, for the word read and preached, for the ways that we have carried one another's burdens. And we pray that you would bless the church wherever she witnesses. Keep every fellowship strong in conviction and in love. And we pray that you would bless the nations. May they be ruled wisely with justice and peace as their aspiration. And we pray that the present circumstances in Ukraine would not lead to war. Bless our United Kingdom. May our leaders find the strength they need for every day. And we ask that you would bless those who daily struggle with pain, with anxiety, with loss. We especially remember those who are still suffering the consequences of COVID-19 and any others that we know who are a particular weight upon our hearts because of their sickness, because of their anxiety, because of their loss. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask that you would draw near to us as we say together his prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together, we have a gospel to proclaim.
Now may you go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.